Sunday sessions. Um, please tell people what it is and why they should be watching it. <laughs> We'll get to some more proper uh, questions. <laughs> um, if you also want to uh, see more of Sorg, who is just like he mentioned, this is the second year of doing it. Sunday sessions are real, raw, in-depth conversations kind of based on the fishbowl um, concept. So mm -hmm. observing someone else from maybe not your walk of life or your culture or your race, having a conversation about things that you may or may not have an awareness of that affects you or affects them. And it's all by professional wrestlers. As black wrestlers and wrestlers of color, we often have very different experiences from our white counterparts, you know, when it comes to booking, when it comes to travel, when it comes to safety, you know, I can remember times of going to promotions and towns where I was with white counterparts and they got out of the car because it wasn't safe for me to. And this was in the 2000s. Do you know what I mean? So these types of things that happen to wrestlers of color um, really affect us differently. And a lot of times people don't see that. So when they see a headline or they see someone like Swole speaking out about things that happened with her experience, it's not taken within the concept or in the context of understanding that there's literally a different experience happening and that we as wrestlers of color have a certain set of rules that we have to play by or abide by that aren't inherently written down. And these are all things that are racially coded, which we know is woven, unfortunately, into the history of our nation. And so all of these things, it's a, literally a situation where life and art are imitating each other. And within wrestling, Sunday Sessions draws attention to these conversations so people can understand what it's like to be a wrestler for one, but to be a wrestler of color and to under, you know, stand that not every time that you see a wrestler, that's the, the first time they've been doing this, you know, mm -hmm. because of the opportunity funnel that sometimes get applied gets applied to wrestlers of color you know after sometimes there is a a challenge to even get a look whereas a less experienced wrestler who is white will get more opportunities or get just a a, a glance based on those inherent biases that we all have to wrestle with, but may not realize come into the booking process and to this creative process, you know, wrestling is art. And it's something that should reflect and represent what everyone looks like and, and actually is in the world. And so Sunday sessions draws attention to wrestlers who are out here doing it, creating magic and who are also having unique experiences that they are willing to share. Uh, with with the world in the hopes that not only fans but even the lay person who may not be a wrestling fan understands the difference and dynamics between how we as people have to operate and move day to day and even within our art and understand how much is given and and how we are so that it brings us closer together because we're not so different even if we have to operate differently and Sunday session seeks to do that. And this year we've upped the ante, we've got some new guests and returning guests. Uh, we've included a game element. There's more amazing black wrestling history. And so I encourage everyone to check out all of the awesome content on indie wrestling us, but especially Sunday sessions. And you can also find it on my YouTube page um, at Ronnie Nicole. And I think this upcoming episode is actually Sway Archer, or this past uh, Sunday mm -hmm. was Sway Archer and Eel O'Neill. And we were talking about, you know, the culture and how sometimes, you know, cultural appropriation gets you further in wrestling is a person who is not of color than if you are a person of color actually authentically being yourself, which is you know, weird if you think about it. So we definitely had an amazing conversation um, and there are definitely more to come. The very last episode will be a double premiere because it's a two-parter. We ran out of time, so we'll be doing the second part live. And that episode features all of my veterans and a lot of very opinionated people, Barrington Hughes, uh, Ali Steele, uh, Will Huckabee, Am I missing anyone, Sorg? I think there's one more person. Who am I missing? Is that an O'Shea on that episode too? 
No, O'Shea and Trevor Aon were together. Okay. There's someone I'm missing, but it's going to be a lit episode. But we've got, yeah, we had Ron Hunt and uh, Theo Ivory. Like I mm. said, Sway Archer and Eel O'Neill. We've got Olivia Devine and um, DM Kiddo upcoming. Uh, we've just so many amazing, talented wrestlers. And I intentionally pick wrestlers of color from various points in their career, especially veterans, because I don't think people realize how quickly wrestling has changed within just the past 10 years alone and how much the climate in terms of booking and how you do the art itself, the storytelling, everything. It's just, it's a whole new world, you know? And so definitely wanted to pull from everybody's ranges of experiences on either side of my own um, to show how things are, even as a wrestler of color, how the progression changes. So that's Sunday Sessions. Please tune in because again, it's not just conversations for Black people. It's conversations for everyone to understand, to bridge the gap and to reach across the aisle and to just say, hey, I, I see you. I recognize your struggle. I recognize your journey. I'm here to support you in whatever way that I can be a true ally to you. And that is what I hope comes out of Sunday sessions, at least for volume two. So. Absolutely. I, I mean, especially after, you know, as we know, you know, uh, you know, a couple summers ago, you know, everything that went on, you know, a lot of us kind of looked at, you know, the situation and saying, okay, what can I do? And one thing I learned is just, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the line of like, shut up and listen, was the biggest thing and this is i i'm really glad that you're you came to me with this project because this isn't something that i feel like i can uh uh, uh interview on try to draw out because i'm going to ask you know the stupid white guy well we our friend you jag off they actually had a they actually had a great panel about this where they're just like hey we're going to ask stupid questions because of our background you know, help us through this, you know, like, what are the real questions that we should be asking about this? And he did it with, um, you know, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers and a lot of people uh, around the Pittsburgh area like this. Um, so, so I'm really glad that we, at least we were able to help with the platform to have these conversations. And again, if you're just like, what can I do about this? How can I help in this with, you know, with everything? Like, I think this is it. Just listen, you know, realize like some of the stories that I heard from some of your like you and, and some of your guests were just like like wait this is this is happening like this still happens in in, in places you know aren't we and you keep casting that question I think a lot of us did a, a, a bit ago aren't we past this you know like you know like people say oh racism solved no you know this kind of is like no this is what's going on from the people that are experiencing it right yes and it's definitely you know it's I think my the starkest realization for me was when I was assaulted by Ian Rotten a grown man punched me in the face slammed my head into concrete and the police were accusing me of assaulting him yeah and would not take my statement and would not speak with me because in me defending myself against him I was the looked at as the aggressor and I realized that this is the reality, you know, and it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that there is such this divide of I'm taking someone's word against someone else because of the color of their skin. When evidence is there, when things are clearly there, you know, when these stories are shared, no one is sharing these things to make up things or make people look bad or, you know, to, to lie. And like, it's, this is literally has ha is happening and has been happening and i think when we turn that blind eye or we aren't comfortable with having those conversations about how uncomfortable it is we also have to realize it's fucking uncomfortable when you go through it mm -hmm. you know it's fucking uncomfortable to walk into a locker room in alabama as a woman of color as an afro latina with confederate flags all around me and people shouting the n-word at me as i'm walking to the ring mm -hmm. That's not a fucking work for me. That's my life. That's me as my identity that's being attacked, even though I'm a performer and I'm portraying a character. But at the end of the day, when I go home, I'm still a person who is affected by these things were said to me. And that's the same experience that a lot of wrestlers of color have when they don't 
act a certain way, when they don't, you know, get into these new money mark clicks that have started to pop up, when when the game isn't played, essentially, when you are just trying to exist and be who you are, that grace isn't given. But with our white counterparts, it is. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's a really, really hard situation, you know, to be in, especially because the one thing I've always said, Sorg, is I just want to fucking wrestle. Like, I just want to go out there and tell stories and have a good time and have a good match and see little brown girls' faces light up because they see me the same way that I lit up when I saw Aja Kong and Amazing Kong. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. for that to me is... (laughs) Sorry, feelings. (laughs) But, like, that to me is what makes this worth it because... I didn't see that coming up. It wasn't until I got a grainy ass VHS tape of Kong and Manami Toyota. And I was like, she's Japanese and she's black and she's doing this and she's a big person. Like, and and to not even go into when I was coming up, the fat phobia was Mm -hmm. super real, Mm -hmm. you know? So even imagining as a plus size kid, that I had the opportunity to do something like this. And that's still something that's slow to change. We are still a society that body shames the shit out of people, which is disgusting. But like seeing someone who even remotely gave me the inkling that I could do this, that there was an opportunity for me somewhere, even if it included going all the way to Japan, which is what I ended up having to do. But that is, it was so impactful that that's really the driving force for me in terms of people understanding what equity and diversity and inclusion really means. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean just booking black wrestlers or LGBTQ wrestlers in the months that it's appropriate. It's booking them as a part of your roster because that's your audience, because that's who's going to actually see them and because that's what's actually real. And even if you are in some place in Alabama, you don't know what black or brown kid is seeing and coming to your event and wanting to see themselves and wanting to see representation and wanting to have a story told from their perspective because all of our perspectives make up the fabric of wrestling you know we all remember amazing matches and things from the past but it's from the lens that we saw it through, Mm -hmm. you know? And so we each remember it a little bit differently in our own way. But if there aren't those stories told that are real, that represent what's happening, then how, how can we be authentic to the art in my opinion? And so Sunday sessions wants to highlight and uplift wrestlers of colors and those stories to encourage promoters and fans, because, you know, promoters listen to the fans to advocate for seeing the things that really happen and that really could create an even more incredible story than you've seen, you know, previously. Definitely, definitely, definitely check it out. Uh, I thought it was fascinating because you you mentioned Japan and and I thought it was, um, you you did some comparisons. I can't remember which episode it was um, about like how, you know, what you experienced here in America and then going to Japan and how like that lens, just everybody looking at you was a whole different lens too. Yeah, like, and and I still say to this day, I was my more myself in Japan than mm-hmm. I was I am here, because I didn't have to worry about being Afro Latina or being yeah. black there. Yeah, you know, no, I had to confront racism and gently correct, mm-hmm. but it wasn't in a sense of I was confronting it because I'm someone is literally a white supremacist and they want to lynch me because that's mm-hmm. a very real thing. It, 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 it was, was just a, a, a cultural they didn't know right yeah 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 so it's like you know they see stuff on tv and that's always not great characterizations of the west right 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 right. you know they see the stereotypes they assume or like little kids will come up and do this and like are you brown because that's like paint or you know like (laughs) it was (laughs) trying to figure it out or they would pull my hair like oh your hair is so much different like there's so much texture my you know like oh yeah it was that and in a way here in the states that's a different objectification yeah than it it, it was there mm-hmm. because it was from a genuine place of i'm curious about you because i was in tonomachi 
it was like all straight old Japanese people. They had not <laughs> seen a plus size at the time. I had like a giant fro. Mm -hmm. I was hopping around. Like when I have my headphones on, I'm bopping and like rapping down the street. Like, you know, I'm wearing crazy colors. I'm, they had never seen anyone like me. So I'm sure it was what's happening, <laughs> you know, in, in just the way that if we saw someone who was nine feet tall walking down the street like what okay something's happening here like it was more of that versus feeling very othered mm -hmm. here in the states and in japan it's you're a wrestler and that's sugoi ne? like that's the best you being a wrestler is what you are whereas who you are in terms of your race and that kind of thing plays a secondary role because wrestling is so respected there you know, it's so interwoven into the culture, into the history. It's so recognized. Wrestlers advertise in convenies. You see it on, you know, on the train and in buses, like everywhere there's wrestling. I remember walking into a conveni and I honestly thought it was Tanahashi <laughs> <laughs> because it was a cutout and it was not. It was not. And I was like doing like, I saw the cutout like before I walked in and I was like doing this whole deal like, <laughs> and I came in and it was cardboard and I felt very dumb uh, something similar happened with Okada except it was a gentleman who looked like him uh, and I was very excited and I rushed up to him speaking broken Japanglish uh, and it was not uh, a great conversation. He backed away from me very quickly and almost knocked over a display case because I was very enthusiastic uh, well, in my pursuit. Well, but... I, I, I tell you, you know, you're not, you're talking to the guy who interviewed a guy he thought was Candy Kingston at a Chikara show and realizing it was just a fan that dressed and looked a lot like Eddie Kingston, and he didn't tell me until after the interview. So. <laughs> <laughs> This is like 2009. I really didn't know yet. <laughs> so <laughs> That's not on you, Sorg. That was not. A... <laughs> I had other people with me, too, that also thought he was Eddie Kingston. So, like, he got, like, our whole group. Uh, so, but, um, yeah, yeah. Early, yeah. Early, early indie travels for us. <laughs> oh, the early lessons are the best. Yes. You know, like, don't book yourself on a 24-hour drive when you don't actually have 24 hours to drive it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I'm sure learning those. The... I'm learning those now, actually. <laughs> With my so kids. I never, I never, because when you're young in the business, it's go get it. Yeah. You yeah. know, get after it. Just get out on the road. Uh, don't worry about like your friends or family. They'll be fine. You just get. <laughs> you, just get on... <laughs> you get on the road. And you ride it. That's right. And uh, you know they'll they'll see you when they see you. So like I was. I can't going... tell you how many birthday parties and how many weddings and mm -hmm. all that stuff that I've missed over the years. Mm -hmm. Right. I, and also like like I remember uh, Shima walking wild. I think he he was notorious for. Uh, uh, or maybe one of those tag along with facade. Uh, but I remember classically, like he had a gig, like something from like Tennessee to Indiana or, or Illinois or something like that, and forgot about time zones completely and like ended up like, oh no, we're actually like, we thought it was three hours, but it's actually six hours kind of thing. So <laughs> like those kinds of things, yeah. like those are, dude, we had a show, we had a show last month in South Bend, Indiana. So that is like, you go to Chicago, like how half the people were taking flights into Chicago and then driving over the timeline in the South Bend. And they're like, what freaking time is it right now? <laughs> so yeah, oh, absolutely. I, I literally, and I thought it was, you know, what you did. Mm -hmm. I went from North Carolina to Georgia to Mississippi, back to Georgia to Massachusetts to North Carolina in three days. Jesus. And I did not account for the time change mm -hmm. when you got to Mississippi. So when the promoter disappears for an hour and 45 minutes with the money, mm -hmm. right, you've mm -hmm. been there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, you know, we've got to hop it on the road because we've got to get to this next show mm -hmm. not calculating that we're really really behind because we're literally in a different time zone <laughs> it was sorg i the stupidest they wanted me to wrestle this drunk lady 
somebody was like trying to kidnap me and i was like wait am i about to be kidnapped and then i was like oh this is what this is like no wait like it was a whole the early years are the best but they're also the worst because you just don't know well and it's like <laughs> any profession that's where you make all your mistakes so you don't later and you got some great stories to tell on a podcast uh, some decades later right <laughs> yes and it was sort of, i was so mad because she tried to play it off like she was um having a diabetes and a heart issue and the people that she rode with i'm not gonna put them out there but they were like drinkers like they're known to okay. drink and wrestle drunk okay. and okay. that's just them okay and they were like mad in the locker room because she had drank half their bottle of vodka in the back seat on the low. And so when she showed up and she was blitzed, but then was trying to like play it off that she was having like issues with her blood sugar and issues with her heart, but they had already complained about her ass drinking their vodka in the back seat. I'm just like, um, so you know, I'm not comfortable wrestling her <laughs> if it is a heart condition. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I don't want to be responsible for her heart to give out inside, though. I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? Mm -hmm. Are you guys for real? Like, you want me to wrestle this old drunk bitch? And I'm not like, <laughs> sorry. Like, I didn't mean that. But just what you were blitzed lady and yeah. you're like in your 50s this isn't okay like if anything i'm 35 i have to like fast for three days before matches now and do yoga every single day if i'm working up to a match okay shit changes so i'm not gonna be getting you know shit faced before a match when i know i'm also older than the person i'm wrestling things have to be precise you know what i mean don't come with that. Mm -hmm. And you know who I did wrestle Sorg? The promoter's daughter. And guess how long she'd been training? Hmm. Four weeks. <laughs> and she wrestled in her color guard uniform because oh, she was still in high school and she had no wrestling gear. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, no. You see oh, why boy. I love Japan and being out of the country? Okay? <laughs> I can't take it over here. I can't. The stories. So one girl, she fell out of the ring into a hole in the ground. What? <laughs> okay, I'm in a thrift store. The show... <laughs> Shows in a thrift store? In West Virginia. And I didn't know where the venue was because it was, you know, a main street with mm -hmm. a bunch of little shops mm -hmm. and it was an abandoned thrift store that they <laughs> were able to somehow rent out and uh, there was a, okay. about a, a I, I, I thought it was a store. running thrift store <laughs> oh, no it was there were some old mannequins in the corner there was no running water mm. and they had Ooh. strung up electricity from the building next door mm. with those workshop lights oh, so boy. that we were oh, we were lit Okay, and there was oh, a three foot by two foot hole in the floor for some reason. I don't know if that went to Narnia or the up upside down. <laughs> but, uh, instead of putting the ring over the hole, they put it halfway over the hole. Oh no! So when I kicked her out of the ring, she fell into the hole. And because she was a plus size girl, she got stuck like a Winnie the Pooh with her arm <laughs> and her leg sticking out. And so, I'm in the ring. Like, so did you win by count out? No, <laughs> they got her out. They stopped the match to get her out. Oh when, my god! Was her was her legs that were dangling out? No, like it, she, her butt and her back were in the hole. So she was like a small dog that had like fallen. And was just, it <laughs> was wedged oh my because God. the ring was covering part of the hole, but her body was, you know, so she yeah. literally couldn't, yeah. you no. know. I want somebody oh, out there to man. illustrate I, this I so have bad. I so many questions about this. Now, when when you discovered she was stuck, did, did you, like, work her with some stops? This was a triple threat. So oh, I went. Oh, okay. so you had somebody okay. else to work with. Well, okay, okay, okay. I did, she was also out of the ring. So I had to wait, go wait, 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 in a different is hole. This, no, wait, this, in so wait, a different side. I gotta no, see if I'm falling along. So the girl that was stuck in the hole—that was the 14-year-old right. in the color guard uniform. 
No. no, this no. was a different situation. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Movie. I'm meshing them in my head. It's late. Right. <laughs> so first story was in Mississippi. That was a Mississippi story. Okay. Yes. That Thrift was shop is West West Virginia. Virginia. Whole different thing. Right. Okay. West Virginia in the in the thrift store where the girl I was wrestling when I initially met her, she was a photographer. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I met her again and she had become a wrestler. Oh, I know one of, I know one of those woman, guys. <laughs> Sorg, I was so confused because mm -hmm. it had only been about, you know, four to six months and I trained for about a full year, you know, so I mean, I'm not, um, I was just... just just just, just just to respond to Dave in the chat room uh, asking about West Virginia safety codes, um, there are none. There right. are none. It, it, I, there, there is I, no there are safety none. codes in West Virginia. We've talked about one of those buildings a few weeks ago. Oh, boy. No. No. <laughs> They don't have that. Why would they have that? No. no. Got, all, no. all I'm saying is if if I survived being in black mold for all the years I was in a certain place, I'm pretty sure I can survive a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've done pretty well so far. Uh, yeah. I'm, so, so. I'm, still, I'm still imagining one-third of a triple threat match getting stuck in a hole. And having like, to be lifted out like, by some old rednecks. Mm -hmm. Come on, girl. Did they call it a triple thrift match? Because they really should have. Mm. Oh, they should have. Mm. Okay, we have to do this match now. Or a thriftal threat match. No, a triple thrift thrift match. Thriftal threat. <laughs> and it has to be, you know how at some thrift stores they have like those, uh, those bins, mm -hmm. the blue yeah. bins that you go diving in? You have cert, you have them, like a couple of them like at each corner. And so you have to go ah, and like get the coal miners. Out of the thrift. Like the, yes, yes, I love this. Like the love like the this. Booker T box on a pole match or something. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh God. Uh. uh let's see. Let's see. Uh. Ch 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 Chad, you're. <laughs> Chad is in here and he's dropping stuff in the chat room. Music down note hole. down in the hole. <laughs> Chad is Chad is just waiting to to start Mayhem Mania. He's just like, what? yeah. Chad, we're Chad anyway. is in the hole. <laughs> waiting for us the box hole, which wait, is separate from yes that. yes He's waiting for us to pull him out waiting for us our red knock ass is to pull his ass out <laughs> so we can get this triple thread on he says i'm he's prepping shirt cocky. he says he's I prepping lost that match still by the way what's that i still lost that match you still lost the match wait you didn't lose to the whole woman did you no, uh yes actually oh, oh my god oh, that's why no. they had to get her out she's the winner <laughs> So, oh wow! It was, uh, I'm glad they know, were. Not... I'm glad they no, were no, really, no. really concerned I, about continuity of story during this match. Did she start <laughs> calling herself the whole damn show because she? Should... <laughs> mm. Mm. Actually, her gimmick was a bit of a juggalo situation. A you juggalo have my you Harley have my Quinn. attention. Now she's a juggle hole. <laughs> a juggalo Harley Quinn. Okay. Oh. oh. So. Okay. Oh, she needs to call herself Holy Quinn. <laughs> the mighty Quinn, she's man. watching like, this girl take these notes down and i wish yeah, you the I, best i'm and giving away a dozen yet. dollar ideas for free that's right <laughs> we're gonna get you over kid it'll be fine maybe i've seen her at jcw i don't i don't I, honestly you know, know she was a west virginia mainstay so, oh, yeah. like, so you you may <laughs> run into her and her tag partner um oh, there's a team there's a oh, team boy. Okay. You know, he cracked many a few ribs. He actually concussed a few uh, good brothers of mine. Oh, no. Back in the day. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. he's now I, now I just Googled her. Juggalo Harley Quinn wrestling. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You're going to find a lot of options there. I mean, right. yeah, yeah. let's yeah. be honest options. about this. I mean, I mean, Ray Lynn's going to pop up for one thing. She did that for a bit. Um, so oh my god, I totally forgot. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, because where was that? Well, they do that. Uh, there's that con out in Ohio where they all it's all cosplay wrestling, and yeah. like, like she goes out, Noir goes out there. Um, and also, I mean, if you haven't seen, like, by the way, Noir's doing some awesome, like, he's always been awesome on TikTok with his Mandalorian gear and stuff, but he's got like some mm -hmm. really cool stuff coming up. I saw pop up the other day, so but just get Panda Numis if you want to check that out on TikTok. Uh, for your uh, what did we call <laughs> what did we call them? for the uh, swole Mandalorian picks? I think we talked about before, but uh, <laughs> so that 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 guy's got me buying Mandalorian stuff now. Does he? <laughs> like he is literally trying to talk me into making armor. 
We got to get him back. We got to get him back at catch up. Yeah. I, like, I don't even want to talk about wrestling. He's back in wrestling, by the way. I don't know if we talked about that. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. been, we've been on when he came back. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, uh, we, we're just going to have him back on to talk about, like, like Boba Fett and Mandalorian and stuff and ask how the Sir, TikToks we'll bring him back on May the 4th. May the 4th, yes! Is that on a Tuesday this year? <laughs> it's on uh, Wednesday. So we'll ah, close it. enough. Ah, close enough. We'll bring so him back on May the 3rd. On Thursday. We will bring all the biggest Star Wars geek wrestlers on May the 4th week. May the 4th That's what we'll you. do. That's what we'll do. Roddy, are you coming back for that one? <laughs> I'm, just, listen, I'm not. The I'm other Roddy. I'm not a full-on Star Wars geek, so I don't, you know, I'm not going to desecrate that space. Okay. Because I, I'm... I don't know if you saw when in Parks and Rec when Leslie gave Ben a thr- the Game of Thrones throne as a gift and she was pretending to be a Star Wars person and he was like, "Listen, if you're not going to get the continuity right, like don't even." Pretend. <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to be that person, you know. It's, it's I okay. know about Star Wars somewhat. I love fucking Grogu. I enjoyed Mandalorian. <laughs> I enjoyed when him and Boba Fett were fucking taking shit down, you know, but I don't know all the, the, the lore and the stories. Um, and so I don't want to be that person who's like, okay, so what's happening now? Okay, so what mm-hmm. do you, okay. Mm-hmm. No, you, 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 list, don't, you don't need I don't, that social media heat. <laughs> right, I don't, no, you don't. right. Because the, the fandom is strong. Yes. You know what yes, I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, the, the, the biggest Doctor enemies Who? of Star Wars fans are Star Wars. Star Wars fans. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you got any problems, just remember to say, hey, Star Wars fans, live long and prosper. I, and mm-hmm. You'll start a war. Yes. <laughs> I don't, right. That's not right. No. And no, then no. hop away in your TARDIS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, listen, I know I just caught it and I was like, wait a minute, that's the that's the other one. No, I don't <laughs> sort I know enough about that. Okay. I'm yes, not gonna yes. the trek in the war. I know yeah. not to, to do you that. You don't cross the trek with the war. Right. Don't cross you the never streams. Cross the stream. No. Now no, my question no. is, is this live long and prosper or is it Vader time? See, I, this like, one, I take it as Vader time, honestly, because mm-hmm. I do a Vader mm-hmm. bomb. So um, <laughs> I, I think of it as Darth Vader time, all right? Yeah. Oh. There we go. If we're going to talk about it, I love I love Darth Vader. I feel like Vader was very misunderstood. Mm-hmm. I feel like, honestly, Anakin's problems were because of Yoda. Let's just be honest. Oh. oh. Hot and now of- Grogu's problems are because of, are because of Luke. It all comes full circle. Yeah, it's this is a problem for me also because I'm like Yoda, you all wise, you had the force, you out here, you know, leading. You gotta lead, man. You gotta do decision making that's gonna help people, and you can't tell people to cut off their emotions. That's how you get Dexter. You know what I'm saying? Look what you did. But but you see, well, yeah, you really have to kind of blame Obi Wan because Obi Wan was wise enough to keep his affairs on the low. <laughs> he, he, he like you know some Duchess Satine stuff. He had it going on. Listen, I just I recently mean... found out about this Satine business and I was oh. like, okay, <laughs> Obi-Wan, let me okay. Let me find out what you got popping out here. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like I yeah. said, I'm not in in the lore, but if y'all that's, want to go fine. supernatural or Doctor Who, a we out here. Girl, okay. we can talk about Supernatural. Um, we can talk about Doctor Daniel. Who also. Listen, you, 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 know, you know, we, we can talk about you Doctor know, Ronnie. Who all you, all you want. I got my Lego TARDIS here. I got fucking Dude, I screwdrivers I in my drawer. I, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. But I have. Oh, my yes. What? Yeah. Oh. What is that? Wow, that <laughs> thing's smaller on the sucks. outside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is really that a cool. what is it a blanket or do you just have like no, a, a full actual full on wall like it's a thing uh it's a thin sheet of cardboard that I actually built and painted to look like a TARDIS. I love it. It's really cool. I love it. I all right, all right. I got um, uh Ronnie, Ronnie, just so you know, there is a a Doctor Who themed restaurant a block from my house. Yes, there is. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about it, and it, it's called the Pandorica. <laughs> this look right now. This look right now. This look right now. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. The, the hold bathroom on. is a TARDIS. I got a. I, hold on. I got more for you. Uh, so you know, there's a supernatural convention that happens in Pittsburgh. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. This is why I get mad at you because you don't tell me shit. I didn't okay? know about it's this like, connection. Since I met you. You what? Are you kidding me? We I... have to come up for it so we can go. 
It just got I delayed until really August. I, I let my because my sister's a, my sister's the one that got me in the supernatural, and I watched the first nine seasons, and I need to go back. Um, so I let her know, and then but but it just got delayed. It's I think it's at the convention center here in town because I think it used it to be is. out in Johnstown previously. Um, so just letting you know. We'll find you some bookings around it in 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 in, in August. And <laughs> is uh is Jensen gonna be there? Did they say? Uh, what's that? Is Jensen Eccles gonna be there? Is I, I don't. Jensen. Excuse me. <laughs> I had to do the hair thing again. Here we go. Is... Here we go. Here we go. You're you're, you're Jared, aren't you? Is no 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 no. Okay. All <laughs> respect to Jared Padalecki. I love Sam. Okay, he is honestly in real life. I probably am more Sam than I am Dean, but I'm a Dean girl through and through, baby. Bay. Okay, give me that emotional baggage. Okay, give me those daddy issues. Okay, give me that conflicted stare, that tortured soul, that fucking jacket from season one that did not fit, but he fucking rocked it. Okay. Give me all of it. Are you kidding me, sir? <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, I'm, Ronnie, I'm, I'm making a note here. Um, <laughs> I just, uh, my whole is blood it, pressure. I just. Now, is it bad that I'm going to buy a My Bloody Valentine action figure and make Dean sign it? No, that's not bad because the only reason I saw that terrible ass movie was because <laughs> was he because was of Dean. It. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I will see anything Jensen or Jerry do, even if it's trash, okay? Because I love them that much. Listen, Dad's been missing. Dad's been on a hunting trip. <laughs> you haven't heard from him. Are you kidding me? Sam is at Stanford University, people. Let's talk about it, okay? Jessica, ceiling, burned, I, I, yellow eye demon. So Are you kidding me? <laughs> Sam, step <laughs> up. Dean, God damn it, Sammy. I, are you kidding me? And then Dean trying to act like he was not scared for his soul to be taken from him. And he went through that whole year trying to be a badass. And then when they're singing Dead or Alive in the car, Dead or Alive. <laughs> and then you see, you see Dean's face mm -hmm. because he realizes he soon will be dead and not alive. Mm -hmm. I, Go to hell. Castiel? Destiel? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm here for the fan um, fiction. Sometimes it gets a bit erotic. I don't mind. So, but so I, so so details and because so you know this is real. Uh, here's the website. It's mementocon.com. I believe it's from the fa folks that brought you Sci-Fi Valley Con over in Johnstown, PA. Uh, or Altoona apparently is happening this year. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's for real. There you go. Um, like I said, I think they just got moved to August. Uh, um, um, Ronnie, I, I do have a quick question because I know Sword that. wants to throw that throw the break but i have a quick question before we want to and desire because this is way too much fun <laughs> okay yeah i know what you yeah, yeah but yes. get <laughs> um what is your doctor companion combination oh my favorite doctor companion combination mm -hmm. yeah. oh absolutely uh amy and rory oh mm. okay okay mm. wasn't yes. expecting that okay yes absolutely okay. clear up I love Clara's story, the idea that she was literally the impossible girl, you mm -hmm, know, the girl mm -hmm. throughout time. Like, I love that whole concept. She was sassy. She was always like, um, no, that's not what's about to happen. I love that. Rose, to me, was in her way like that, but I also felt like Rose was like, uh -huh, uh -huh, you know, like, Rose, okay. Okay. you're a companion. <laughs> There's going to be companion stuff. Don't whine. But I feel like just with Matt Smith's doctor and Karen Gillum, like that dynamic and that, that especially acting wise, they have a really good chemistry, but just with, from her being that little girl meeting him and waiting her life for him <laughs> to come back and take her on the TARDIS, like, but she actually didn't wait for him in a romantic way. It was just like, I know this person is going to take me on a great adventure. And one day I'm going to have that. I just got to hang on. She found her love. You know, Rory waited for her for 2,000 years. Yes, that motherfucker loved her. Okay? Yes. And then when she, he was like, I doubted you because you were always with him. And she was like, it's always been you. And then she turned around and then... <sighs> 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I I couldn't walk in Central Park for six months after that episode. Oh my god, Good I couldn't. To this day, I haven't watched it all the way through directly. I've listened to it. I watched it through the first time and I can't watch it through again because that just, and because you saw how connected the three of them were, he needed them. He, that iteration of the doctor suppressed his rage in a way that Tennant's iteration did not. And so he <laughs> needed them to keep him like cool. Cause there were moments where he amped out and I was like, mm -hmm. what's happening? Oh, on what's oncoming baby? storm. <laughs> oh my God. Yep. Yo. So, you know, like, are we going back to war doc? Like, what are we doing? What's happening right now? Well, so, I, I, I'm a Ten and Rose guy. So I'm so, a Ten and Rose guy. So, I mean, you know. Yes. But the, I, yeah. Amy and Rory, absolutely hands down, my two favorite companions, their dynamic, the trio of them. The day of the doctor. Oh my god! Don't get me. Actually, my phone, <laughs> my phone is named River Song. Um, so when you search for it on like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, it's River Song because I love River. Like, are you kidding me? Such a badass. Did, did the you fact... see the the wedding of the River wedding Song? of River Song? Oh my god! Listen, the <laughs> fact that they live there like. That her, they live their lives in like you know like we're crossing streams like I'm going backwards you're going forwards and it's just like but everywhere I encounter you you're my person and she was the only one to get under the doctor's skin like that mm -hmm. she was the <laughs> only one to ever challenge him in the heart way and that to me was like whoa because you know you really didn't see that I just listen, guys. I know this is a wrestling show and not a Doctor Who oh, show. Oh no, no, it's this is no, this is about where we end up actually most of the time. So you're not, you're, you're you, you, you. I mean, we you could know. talk about this, or we could talk about the terrible optics of the, the Elimination Chamber pay per view. Yes, I'd much exactly. rather talk about that. Let's not. Talk about yeah. The yes. Exactly. <laughs> listen. Either way, this is a show. That Care, Voltaire. I'd much rather talk about Voltaire. This is a show that starts with the pretense of being a wrestling podcast, and either way, we have fun around wrestling. Sometimes that goes into Chip and Dale, and sometimes it talks into Doctor Who. I don't care. care. As long Care's as we're having Dylan fun. With Dave Batista, who is a wrestler. Oh, Boom. and there we go. So there you go. Yes. There Love go. her as Nebula, by the way. Mm -hmm. So far, especially mm -hmm. when she fucking finally bites a thing, and she's like, it's not ripe. Bitch, they've been telling you it's not ripe the whole time. Like, don't. <laughs> <laughs> she is so good. God, oh, I it. love, honestly, I love seeing wrestlers cross over. I mm -hmm. don't, well, there were a couple of things that The Miz did. No offense that I just didn't like. But, like, Peacemaker, I'm loving Cena in that. Yes. Peacemaker yes. is amazing. Yeah, Peacemaker is so good. So good. Eagly, guys. <laughs> really? Eagly's Ronnie, shit. Ronnie, I'm really glad you got to taste it. <laughs> I what I would have what I would give for number thirty at the Rumble this year to be Peacemaker. Yeah, I would have, yeah. I would have yeah. given anything. <laughs> I, like like it's not John Cena. It's very clearly not John Cena. He he's wearing the helmet. He comes out. Do do you really want to? Do you really want to taste it? He does the dance down the aisle. Everyone's confused. Yep. And then yep. he walks in the ring and immediately gets thrown out. Mm -hmm. That's all I want. That's yep. all I fucking want. Yep. And I would love yep. that, dude. Yep. Great. Yeah, right. geez. On that note, we have some business to get to. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Uh, 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 Nicole, not the other one. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Sunday sessions. Yeah, not Steve. Every Sunday here in uh, in February. And also, please check out the, the first the first. Uh, 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 or five episodes we did uh, from last year, also still in the YouTube, still in the podcast feed for Indie Mayhem Show or the super feed for Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, and at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. So um, however you take in our content.
<laughs> so, uh, so we are, and also featured, um, cause you're going to see a commercial in a second for, uh, our friends at grind city. Uh, we've actually been including, uh, parts of those interviews in several episodes over there, um, which are, those are also re been replaying on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, so you can check out grind city over on the Roku app on the RyanCity.biz, And I believe they also have an Android app as well, which I think is also like for your phones and for your TV. If you have an Android TV, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know. Android gets funky. So.